Hey, there's Will. I'm going to go through the markets again and um, look at um, some sector ETFs and inverse ETFs as I've been doing lately because markets are in generally a downtrend. Uh, as we can see in the NASDAQ here, we have this downtrend. I drew a line across the tops of the prices. So we had a little rally up here. Hit. So once you can create that line, then you basically had a little thing here. Um, MACD crossed over, but then, you know, it's rolling over again. We're right at a support point in June, the June low. Um, but it's a good place to potentially short when you fail off of that trend line or a moving average. So like the 50, 50 days right there as well, the blue one. And this is the 200 up here, the red. So basically, you know, once you see the failure, that's a good time, except that you are near a support. And so um, you could, you know, you could wait for more of a, a break of that downtrend of that um, support line. But um, if we go to, let's say IWM, it's doing a bit better, but in a sense, like where it's not right at its low, the last two lows here, but it did fail. So when you see that um, sort of upper wick and pushed right back down, that's a good failure point especially when you're down below the 8 EMA and a red volatility stop. So you're now, the price is below the, uh, the volatility stop. So that's showing the dot near where that support line is here. So to me, this is a sign of another down leg. And just a matter of, you know, it's going to go up and down. It doesn't just go straight down, so it'll be zigzagging. But um, we're still on a downtrend. Um, if we look at S&P 500, these are all very similar. Um, we just failed off of that um, line. Now, what happened was employment, unemployment rate went from 3.7 to 3.5 percent. So that shows that there's actually more jobs, like more people working. So basically, you know, the fear is that the inflation will be high or that um, they won't pivot. So a lot of time, the market's just waiting for this pivot, looking for weakness. They've seen a few indicators of other countries that have capitulated like Bank of England and stuff. So they, you know, they're waiting to see, but I honestly think they have to stay at high rates and maybe even higher rates because they have to get the inflation down to 2%. But a lot of things are going to break even at the governmental level uh, in other countries as well as in the US or, you know, there could be all sorts of problems with government issues. Their debt is so high that, you know, the interest rates are making the debt payments really, really high. Um, so you've got the sovereign issue with the countries, their bonds, like the government bonds, nobody's buying the bonds that are used to, 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 you know, for the debt of the government. So, you know, the Fed, the central banks have to basically buy the bonds, um, but that's not happening if they're doing quantitative tightening and higher rates. So Dow Jones did the same thing. So what I also added in my market section, just because it's important to the markets, is the dollar index. So you can see it pulled back. That's where the market sort of rallied. The dollar kind of came down, but once it bounced off of this 34 exponential, now we're back up again above the ADMA. So we're still in an uptrend. If we look at the weekly chart, I'll turn off the, um, you know, we're in this uptrend. Um, you know, it is pretty high and it's fairly steep and it's fairly high off of these moving averages, but for now, that's what it's happening. And it's, you know, you get these little pullbacks to the ADMA, but still in an uptrend. So that's the US dollar index that it takes into account many other countries um, dollar as well, relative strength. And then TBF is a 20 year treasury ETF inverse. So basically it goes up when the yields go up. So you can see that the yields are going up. And so we're still in this uptrend. Um, and you can buy those ETFs. I'll show that in a second. And then the VIX, um, if we go back to daily, we're right at this 200. So you can see how it bounced off of it. So, um, but it is curling back up again on the MACD or price percent oscillator momentum. So, you know, my, my gut is saying that this will probably continue to rise. So you could draw, I think I might've done that already. Yeah. There's a line here, which is kind of the support. So it's a little bit up, up, off of that, but you know, if you're seeing it pull back at some point and go up, um, you know, it's heading in that upper direction. And there, people were saying that you need, you need VIX to be like, if I go to the VIX, um, this one here, you need the VIX to be up pretty high for capitulation, like where the stock just market just tanks. We're not even close to that. Like in 2020, you had this huge rise. So we're just at 31 right now. But if this breaks this sort of trend here, 
and start, keeps going higher. If it breaks this trend line here, and see how it's doing like a J hook, like com, com, curling back up again, then you know we could be in for trouble. So from there, um, you know I do look at the S sector ETFs, but you'll notice that like I have a whole bunch here. I have 141 of sectors ETFs that I've. They're most of them negative. So when you're at the top and you have low percentages here, like there's there's not very many before we go negative. That's an indication that you know yes Friday was a down day, but there's a few things that are going up. Um, that aren't inverses and stuff like that. As I mentioned, TBF. So I'm in this fund. I've got a, it's a, um, it goes up when the yields go up. So once we broke this little pullback and it had a break here in an uptrend, then you can continue, you know, that could be continuing to go up. Um, a shorter term bond yield is the SJB. And that is supported at the 34 exponential and now is above the 80 MA. So um, except that this hasn't crossed back over, but it's curling around. So you, if you get in early, you're, you're taking a bit of a chance, but um, you did see it support and bounce up with a gap. So that is a, um, a good sign. If you look at, like on my chart, I've got 30-day performance. The TBF is 10% and the SJB is 5%. So the TBF has done, done better than the SJB, the short term rate. So, you know, sometimes you can also, if you want to get really focused on the best performing things, you can look at that type of information as well. Um, so oil and gas is going up because Saudi, the OPEC plus decided to cut production. So um, the, the counter of that is that if you have a recession or some major global recession, that oil will go down, like energy use will go down quite a bit. But you're cut, the U.S. is really low on their strategic petroleum reserve, and so, you know, and there's not a lot of exploration uh, in oil and gas because of this climate change, you know, stuff like that. So, and the ESG and all that. So it's, um, you know, that's the thing that's going to drive it higher. But the fact that the recession, etc. But the, with unemployment being 3.5, you know, it doesn't seem like things are too bad right now in terms of the economy. Um, so. There's some agricultural commodity type stuff, and some of these have oil and gas in them, gold, metals, and agriculture. But you see how it broke this big downtrend here. So ideally, like it's above the 50, you could buy there, but I, I'd like to see a little pullback and then a, and then a, a next up leg. So because you had a whole bunch of up, to, up candles in a row, which doesn't generally happen too often, you know, you want to see some sort of down day and then a, maybe some strength returning so you could get in, but. Um, and if you bought in right when it crossed, you're also right at the 50. So a lot of times it breaks up through the 50 and pulls back like here. So, um, but agriculture, I noticed GSG is a similar one, commodity based. So it's broken the thing, but you know, I'd like to see a little pullback and then a, a, a pivot there. So you could see the, um, you know, that could be your stop area. And then you've got the cotton and corn, stuff like that. Um, that sugar cane, these are all commodity E um, ETFs, DBA as well. You can look at those and see what is in them in terms of the composure. Some of them don't have commodities or don't have oil and gas or gold in them. They're just commodity specific. So what I've got, I've got a watch list right now. This is subject to change at any point in time, but I'm in UUP. I'm in a lot of cash, but I've got UUP just for a little interest, um, which is the uptrend. I've also, I'm in Canada, so I've got a lot of money in the US dollar because I've moved it to a US account. Some, you know, some of my, my cash so that it's actually, without buying any stocks, I'm actually increasing my relative um, value because Canada, the exchange rate is going up. But TBF, as I mentioned, and then I am in, in the PSQ, which is the inverse of the NASDAQ. It's just a one-to-one -one inverse, but you see how we have this recent, we have, we're very close, like on the, on the Qs, it's a little different. But I mentioned that we're right at that support point. But with PSQ, we're, we're, it's not quite the same, but there's a J hook here, support at this <clears throat> trend line and, and heading up again. So this isn't generally a great spot when you see this little curl up again. 
it's up high off of the zero line for the price percent oscillator. You know, I like to get it in when it's crossing zero, you know, down here. Um, but because the chance of, you know, things reverting back like this, once you get up high up here and you see how it pulls back down to zero, goes up again a little bit, but then it comes way back down. And so you went oversold and then you, then you start to reverse. So if you're getting in down here, you know, that's a great spot because you got this crossover and you're just getting above the 200. And you do have congestion with the other moving averages there, but, um, I'll just take that off. So that's the ideal spot. Or when you see this pull back and then it bounces like a big gap up here above the 50, that's a great entry point. So I put arrows usually where I, where I think, you know, I should have say got in looking back, but, um, we'll see what happens. But if we go to inverse ETFs, there's a whole bunch. Some of them <clears throat> go up and down quite a bit. Like cannabis went up huge because of, um, Oh, let me go to the states for a second. I'll just show you this. There's MJ and there's also YOLO. You had a huge candle when they when they pardoned a lot of cannabis users, and then a, a, a huge um, thing that doesn't affect really anything that they're doing for the for the laws, but uh, federal laws towards cannabis. But you know, it is getting close to an election time, so. Um, but I, I'm not into you know these are just too big of turn. Same with inverse arc if you want to be in a highly volatile area like you've got big ups and downs but that's the inverse arc so that's kind of like if you're if you're if you're thinking the markets are going to go down especially nasdaq with interest rates you know you could get into more specific tech stocks tech etfs inverse so that um, that's one of them but even these are big moves for nasdaq and for iwm like for russell 2000 but you also ha you have that support at the 34 and a J hook kind of reversal. So if that happens, you know, it looks like this is heading upwards, <clears throat> supported at this trend line here. Um, and the green volatility stop. So that would be, that could be a, an entry point, even though you're not crossing at the max D, you're up pretty high and it is curling around. So, um, but you know, it's a highly volatile area to be trading in right now. So it's, you know, it's not the greatest where you have more stable, uh, market and economy and global issues. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs which can shake out people with their stops and stuff. Um, Bitcoin is another one in Canada. Biddy, if you wanna, it's still been sta staying around that 20,000, 19,000 point in very low volatility, which is interesting for a cryptocurrency. But, um, you know, if things start to move, you know, this might be something to get into if Bitcoin starts dropping below its support, you know, in the 18 or 19,000 range. <clears throat> um, because earnings are going to be coming out and they may be too, too high estimates. So that would probably create another leg downward or inflation next week. CPI PP is going to show, you know, if those are, are not good, then and the more and more acceptance of higher rates and longer term higher rates, um, I think you know, that could be another down leg in the markets. Um, I just wanted to talk about this one thing I took a screenshot of, which is the, um, let me just close that. So this is the 10 year yield versus S and P 500. So you divide it, it's called a ratio chart. You take the 10 year yield, you divide it by the S and P. In 1972, you had this look, and this is the S&P down here. So it went down and then it started to come back up. So if you look over here, this is current day. You have this uptrend, which is kind of like this. And then, and you're up here when you pulled back and then you came back up. So we're kind of like in this area right here, because when you had the markets going up, that's when this thing came down through the moving averages and crossed right down through the moving averages, like below all the moving averages here. See how there's a whole series of lines here. This is breaking down through as it's coming back, bottoming, and then the S and P going up again. So if you look at this chart and we're, we're up above, we had a little dip into it and then a back up again. So we're kind of in this area. And if you look, if you think about it right here, there's a few rallies, you know, you might get some rallies like in this upcoming election year, the next few, next few months, which are usually a strong period for markets ups and downs, and then you break the kind of a support and then you get quite a few more legs down. 
So this kind of looks like this area right here. But, you know, you could conceivably, um, you know, pick a spot along here, which is a lot longer, you know, it hasn't been in that section that long, but, um, so that I wanted to point this out because it looks like if we're in this area that there's quite a bit more downside in general. So that's an interesting chart. So anyway, I think that's all I want to say. If you want to get TC2000, which is what I use here, check out the link in the description. You can get a free trial or $25 off your subscription. And, you know, I use these, I use the, these, uh, the palette to draw lines and trend lines and arrows. I've got um, the volatility stop indicator up here so you you know you can see where it's flipping from red see this down thing the red can dots help you see the the trends now we're back up again in the green so you can use those as stops and also tr you know reversals in um, um, in trends uh, all sorts of watch lists here and um, lots of stuff with tabs that you can have different tabs and different scans for different things you want to look for, form, write your own custom formulas, and um, that's about it. So we'll see you in the next video. Good luck.